could come sit on something, a folded blanket or, or a phone, and just sit in Shrasti Kasan with your legs crossed, crossing at the midline of the shin. So bring your knees a little closer together and move your shins further forward. Draw your buttocks flesh back so that you're sitting directly down onto your sitting bones. <clears throat> Hold onto your knees and gently pull onto your knees as you allow your knees to descend. So move against the pulling of the hands on the knees. Lift your chest. Bring your hands into the prayer position, the namaskarasan. Just gentle, a gentle connection with each fingertip and thumb. And when you're ready, gently close your eyes. And bring your awareness to the space that you're in and to the mat that you're sitting on. And to your breath, it's naturally entering and leaving the body. This constant flow of life or prana. Let your awareness and your, your mind soften away from your head, down into the breath, to come and settle in the seat of the heart. We'll do the three Om sounds together. So empty your lungs completely. Inhale. Oh. Oh. Stay seated with your eyes closed. I'll open with the invocation to Patanjali. If you know it, join in. And if you do, if you don't, an ancient um, invocation, just acknowledging and giving gratitude to where yoga came from. Yogena chitasya padena vacham, malam sharirasya chaveja kena, yopa kurutam pravaram muninam, pitanjalim pranjali ranatosi, abahu purushakaram. Shanka Chakrasi Darinam, Sahasra Shirsam Shwetam, Pranamami Patanjali, Hare Om. Release your head to your heart and have a moment to make your own inner acknowledgements. And release your hands onto the back of your knees, palms up. Just keep your head down. Open your eyes, allow them to focus. And when you're ready, raise your head. 
We need a strap, so just bring it close to you. So not everybody will need it, but we're just going to open up the shoulders a little. So stay seated as you are where the knees are closer together. Allow for a lift in your chest. Raise your left arm, turn your palm behind you, and then release that arm down your back. Take your other hand and revolve the outer thigh towards the ear, so this sort of direction, revolving the outer arm inward towards your ear. So if you can move your arm further back, reach up into that elbow. So if you need the strap, you can place it into that left hand, hang it down your back. Bring the other arm in line with your shoulder, really lift your chest here and revolve that hand so your thumb moves down and all the way back and bring your hand to the back. <clears throat> so if you can grab your fingers, some of you may even reach your wrist, otherwise hold onto the strap. Realign your head now so that your neck is not jarring, your head is not pressed into that arm. Soften your gaze and look down towards the floor. They're not right in front of you. If you have to look forward and then just slowly lower your gaze until it meets the floor. Allow your eyes to softly, almost blur there. Just notice where it feels tight and in which shoulder. We're going to change the arms now, so carefully release. <clears throat> Put the strap onto the other shoulder if you use the strap. And then take the other arm up, so your right arm up, revolve the entire arm from the outer arm towards your ear. Palm facing behind you, keep your arm completely straight and then release that arm down your back. Reach up into that elbow, lift your chest. Bring the other hand down, palm facing down. Keep lifting your chest. Turn the thumb down to the floor and bring the arm behind you. It's a nice safe way to access movement in the shoulder. And then once you're in this position, just hold and breathe. And any shoulder injuries in that go to your where it's comfortable for you. So don't go to the pain. Just if you if you find the pain, just move a little away from it. So be aware of the Sanskrit word ahimsa is non-violence, and that's outwardly and inwardly. Again, let your eyes softly lower down towards the floor when they meet the floor. Let them defocus. Almost like the lens are on a camera. Just a little bit blurry and connect to your breath. Again, just take awareness to where you feel discomfort or where it's tight. And we're going to repeat the side that feels tightest to you. Carefully release. Just change the crossing of your legs. Again, knees closer towards each other. Be on your sitting bones, so buttocks flesh back. Hold onto your knees for a moment, lift your chest and go to the side that felt tightest for you. And once you're in that position again, soften your eyes, defocus. Connect to your breath using the gentle exhalation 
to release any tightness. It's normal breathing. So if you do have any shoulder complaints, try and do this one as often as you can. If you can, I mean, we all could do it every day if we apply ourselves. But if you really try, it only takes a few minutes to do, and it brings such a great release, and there's a balance that comes to the shoulders. Instead of just doing one side and then the other, repeat the side that's more tight. Okay, carefully release. Bring your hands back onto your knees. Just roll your shoulders back, each time making the, the circular movement slightly bigger, bringing your shoulder blades closer towards each other. As you roll back, lift your chest. Keep your neck long and soft. You might get a bit of a grisly massage there. You might even hear the sounds. And now bring your hands in front of you so your arms are bent. Just look forward. Arms are bent like that. Take your left hand and put it on top of your right hand. And then entwine your hands. Just go to where it's comfortable for you. If you can, let your palms touch. Keep your knees descending. Position your hands so that either you just Blurring into your wrists or just looking beyond, but your eyes have defocused. Draw your navel back towards your spine and up towards your sternum. Lift your chest. If you can, take your hands a little higher and draw your hands away from your face. So, just of course, remember just listen to your shoulders. If they're tight, everybody's shoulders are completely unique. Hold and breathe. So this is Garuda Sun arms, the eagle arms. Okay, carefully release. Now we're taking the right arm on top. Entwine. See if you can walk the fingers up towards the other fingers and then defocus your eyes. Bring your navel broadly back to your spine, up to your chest, lift your arms, draw them away from you, breathe. And then release, just put your hands onto your knees again, lift your chest. Roll your shoulders back again, lifting them up high and then bringing your shoulder blades close towards each other, lift your chest. Okay, so we're going to come take all the props off the mats and You will need something under your head. So if you have the yoga phone, you can use that or a blanket. You'll need two blankets or a towel. So whatever you've got at home. And then open it up. So it's quite, it's going to be quite thin when we fold it. And you can do what's called the, what we call the three-fold blanket. I'll show you from the side. This is going to be a long three-fold. So like that, that, and that. So obviously we've all got different size and shaped blankets or towels that we're using, but it's, it's not too thick and it's quite long. So you'll see what we're going to do now. I'm going to move a little bit closer. Can you still see me on this part if I, lie, if I go down? Okay, yeah. So you'll need something for under your head. 
take your knees apart, sit back onto your heels, point your toes behind you. So this is going to come right into this front groin or front hip. Pull it in quite close. Are you all there? It's just a quite a long, thin folded blanket or towel. And then I'll demonstrate. So if you can just look here, we're going to lift our chest. And then as we come forward, hold onto this towel or this blanket and pull it back. Keep lengthening forward. Take your head down onto the support. And then from here, pull back even more. And then bring your hand and cup your fingertips onto the floor. If it helps to bring your knees a little bit closer together, you can do that. So you really want to pull back, lift your chest, lengthen forward, take your head down. And then bring your hands forward, arms are straight, but your fingers are cupped. So if you have any knee problems, you can also put something behind the back of your knees. Then you would need to take hugs between your heels and your buttocks. <clears throat> so putting the blanket chairs is great for any tight hips or, or any back pains. So you've all got your head down, your hands are cupped. Arms are completely straight. And press down onto your fingertips as if you're trying to push them forward to allow your buttocks to move closer towards your heels. It doesn't matter if they don't connect for now, but have that intention. Sitting bones reaching back. But at the same time, the front of the body lengthens forward. So for a moment, lift your chest, lift your head, lengthen forward, take your head down again. Press down onto your fingers as if you're pushing your hands away from you, reach back with your sitting bones. And now invite your breath to the back body, towards the kidneys, so in the lower part of the back ribs. Invite your breath into that region. Let the back of the body broaden and soften and open. And then raise your head, bring your hands all the way back to your knees. Just re sit up and then fold your blanket as it was so you can use it just now. So fold it back and just put it one side. You'll need one of your blankets. Keep it nearby, some of you may not need it, but let's have it there just in case. Stand onto your mat with your feet hip width apart. The outer edges of your feet need to be parallel to each other. So you may, when you look down, you may need to take your heels out slightly. Make sure your blanket is really close to you so we can access that if, if, if you need it. Take your hands onto your hips, your elbows back. So if you look down now, your knee cap should be facing forward. Okay, with that awareness, look forward again. Inhale and exhale. Just move your knees forward and your buttocks back. Bend your knees, lift your chest. So your knees haven't caved in towards each other. You're not gripping your knees towards each other. They're facing forward. You're reaching back with your sitting bones, lifting your chest. Take your elbows back. And from here, see if you can descend. If you can't, you need to slide the blanket down and put it underneath your sitting bones. And then take your hands forward. I'll go from the side. Take 
lifted all the way down. So your buttocks descend down to the floor. Arms are forward. Let your knees go out to the sides here. Lift your chest. So into my last one. You've got the foam underneath the, or the blanket under the back of your heels, underneath your heels at the knee. Take your arms a little higher. Inhale, come up to halfway. So your knees are bent. Reaching back with your sitting bones. Keep your chest lifted. So Utkatasana, be a strong pose. Come all the way up. Take your arms up. Keep your arms parallel. Reach up. Inhale. And exhale, bend into Utkatasana. Keep breathing. Reach back into your sitting bones. And now let your buttocks descend into Malasana with your feet apart. Come up again halfway, Utkatasana. Take the weight back onto your heel side. Inhale, come up, join your hands, join your feet and exhale. Bring your hands into the prayer position, Namaskarasana. And release your hands. So for this next one, so some of you won't do the full kick up. It's tricky not seeing all of you in the room here with me. So just remember, you know your body better than anybody else. Adho Mukha Vrikshasana is the full arm balance. I'm going to show you the, the walk up for this there's a, there's a focus on the direction here. So I'll move on with Matt a little closer to show you the side profile. So if you just watch for now, if you are practicing regularly and you want to just go up, that's fine. You're going to go from Adha Lift your heels, move your weight towards the wall, come back down. Repeat this a few times, right up onto your toes. Then move your feet further forward. And go again. Can you see the lift in the hips and the direction towards the wall? So that movement against that is often what stops us. We sort of stop here and we try and kick up, kick up. We need the hips to move over the shoulders. So coming over the shoulders so we can get that lift. And then from there we can kick up. And when you, if you get up to the wall, you can just play here. See if you can balance it, reaching up into your heels. When you come down, bring your head down and you can rest again. Adha Mukha Virasana, but bend your arms, take your head down. So that will be for some of us. Some of us can work with that. If you're not kicking up, still do that movement forwards. Bringing the weight, your shoulders above your hands and your hips above your shoulders. Go to your personal maximum. Don't go to pain if there is any pain in the shoulders. I need to catch my breath. Before I show you the other one now, if you're not kicking up, you're still going to do that movement of getting the direction towards the wall. And then you can play with this option where you come from down the dog, you will need a bit of wall space. You can walk your hands a little closer, not too close. You want to walk your feet up the wall and then move so that your shoulders are above your wrists. It's great for strengthening the shoulders, your arms are straight. Again, you can come down and rest. So some of you may already be going up, that's fine. And if you want to see any other options, or going up or if there's shoulder problems. Remember you can try by turning your hands out. So your hands literally turn out to the sides. You can try that. And then there's also the option of the belt. So the belt, you need to make it so that it is, it needs to be at one of these belts that don't slip. If you don't have one of these, a yoga belt that doesn't slip, you could try, I guess, with a clothing belt, as long as it's strongly into one of the little rungs or holes. This is a bit twisted, there you go. So it's like that. You're pressing out into the belt. 
And you can try like that going up. It often helps a lot with getting a lift in the shoulders. I need to adjust that a little bit. So you can just have it below your elbows. Show you again. You have to press out into the belt if you're using the belt. Otherwise, it just falls off. So keep pressing out into the belt. So for everybody doing it, your surface area on your hands must be great. Your fingers must be spreading. And then from here, you do the same movement, moving backwards and forwards. And so you're ready to pick up. For those of you who are getting up, first of all, look down to the floor, walk your heels up, then look forward. Take your front ribs back. Walk your heels up even higher. Let the balls of your feet be higher. And then look down between your hands. And for those of you who are in this position and you want to try, try taking one foot away at a time. You can even bend the other leg. You know the wall's there. Find your balance. If you're using the strap, press your arms out into the strap. And remember when you come down from it, put your head down, bend your elbows, and you're relaxing in the elbows and the shoulders. So there's something in, in that that's so attainable for everybody. Doesn't mean you have to go up. Very nice, Louise. So if you're taking your, your feet up, just be careful to not bring your one leg up and over because some people have gone backwards. You want to try and keep your feet, first of all, in line with your hips, and then you can walk your feet up higher, higher, higher. It's a lovely feeling. And come down and rest when you've had enough. So Daisy, for you, I would definitely say to use the belt so your arms aren't rotating out too much and that your arms are nice and straight. It's a good one for you just below your elbows. Have the belt just below the elbows. And this is a great one. Practice in your own time. Nice, Joe. It's a lovely one to work with. Especially doing that Adam Mukashonas in the downward facing dog where you are moving your weight towards the wall. You're moving the entire body towards the wall, which is that, that action that you need for kicking up. You just have a moment with your head down when you've had enough. And it's also a great one for relieving anxiety or stress. So we're going to go into Mari Chiasin, which is, um, there's three different ones, but we're going to just play around with this one. You'll need, again, a folded blanket or your yoga foam. Have a strap nearby. You can come and sit on your mat now. Bring your feet together. So just sitting in Dandasan, Dandasan, which is the staff pose. Straight arms, but extending down, straight legs, lifting your chest. Your fingers just facing forward for now. Draw your buttocks flesh back. So in doing that, your pubic bone faces down towards the floor, which is what you want. You don't want the pel pelvic girdle to be tipping the opposite way. Keep lifting your chest. Feel your ankle bones touching. Remember if there's hot flushes or menopause, you just take your feet apart. Bend your right leg. I'm doing the mirror image. So your right leg is bent. Put flat on the floor. Keep the other leg pinned to the floor, the back of the leg pinned to the floor, toes pointing up, hold onto that knee, lift your chest. And now turn to your left. So take your left arm out, 
hook onto the inside of that leg, lift your chest and turn. Just an open turn to your left. Keep lifting your chest, keep pressing the back of your left leg down. Turn from the waist. Feel the waist turning to your left, chest turning. Inhale deeply, exhale, come back to the front. And now, take your left hand out to the side, lean over, take your right arm with that. Keep this knee as it is, so don't let it fall over with you. Come flat towards the floor, flatten yourself towards the floor. You have to bend your left elbow, get towards the floor, and now try and keep your chest low. Creeping around, all the way around to your foot that's in front of you, your left foot. Press down into your fingers, lift your chest, look forward. Keep lifting your chest, keep the back of the left leg pressing down. Just remember those with hyperextension, if you're on a support like this, you may need to put a folded blanket behind the back of your leg. You don't want to overextend that opening for those of you with the, the hypermobility. Lift your chest, keep lifting. And now your right knee must hug into yourself. Try and keep it coming towards your torso. And it's a strange action here. You're going to almost soar forward with your arms. So reach forward and back. Keep reaching forward and back. Keep your right knee hugging in towards you. And now you've got your strap nearby. If you can't reach your foot, put the strap onto the foot and hold it with your left hand. So you're holding your strap or your foot with your left hand. Bring your right arm and hook it. Your forearm is low down on that shin of that right leg as you can. Hook it. And as if you're pressing your shin back, hug your knee in even tighter towards you. You can press your fingers onto the floor if it helps. Cup your hand. Press that. Keep looking at your left foot. Hold on that foot. Keep your head up. Keep lifting your chest. So if you have the capacity to bend your left arm, pull even more on that foot. Keep the back of that leg pressing down. And then come all the way up. Change legs. So now your left knee is bent. Pin the back of your right leg down, toes pointing up of that right leg, lift your chest. And open twist now to your left. Take your right hand behind you, hook with your arm on the inside and press against that knee, resist with that knee and press back into that arm, lift your chest. Inhale and exhale, turn to your right. Keep turning. Using that bent arm and that bent leg, resisting each against each other to turn and deepen this open twist. Keep breathing. If you can, look over your right shoulder. Keep your chest lifting. So now keep your, that arm into that bent leg. Move your right hand onto the floor, creep it onto the floor. See that that knee stays where it is and join, bring your other hand onto the floor. So walk down as low as you can with your hands, taking your shoulders down and then slowly walk around, keeping low. Come up to your foot, your right foot. Keep that left knee hugging into the torso. Lift your chest. Press onto your fingers on the floor. So if you're pulling the floor forward, lift your chest, look forward. Keep that knee coming into the torso. And now soar forward and back. Your arms are moving forward and back. Now I'm just showing you from the side, for those of you who need to see from the side, this movement backwards and forwards. Bend knee coming in towards your midline. And now hold your right hand onto that foot or use your strap. Bring your left arm as low down on that shin 
as you can, hook it back, press your fingers onto the floor. Keep looking at your right foot and press back even more into that shin. Keep that knee coming into the body. Lift your chest, lengthen the front of your torso forward. Gently pull on that foot. We're not going to do the full pose. These are preparatory poses that we're working towards another particular pose or asana. And then slowly come sit all the way up. Bring both your knees to be bent, legs bent, hold on to your shins, lift your chest. So now we're going to just, I'll show you the front, you can look from the front, you'll bring your left leg to be bent, the back leg slides back, and then you're going to come onto the inside of that leg. See if you can come as low down as you can. So I'll show you from the side. So your left leg will be bent. You come bring your body onto the inside. Come as low as you can. Some of you may have to stay up this high, that's fine. There should be no pressure on the knees. So you're going to reach back into the, the toes. If you can, some of you may get your forearms to the floor. And again, bring this knee in towards the torso. And hold and breathe. Spread your fingers if you can. Just look down to the floor. See if you can take your arms down to the floor. Bend your, I'll bend your arms lower down. Reach back to that into the toes of the leg that's extended behind you. Keep that bent knee coming in towards your midline. Hold and breathe. And let the groin soften and open. And then come all the way up, just change legs to bend the other leg. So your chest comes onto the inside of the other leg. Reach back into the toes of the extended leg. Keep that bent leg coming in towards your midline. Just look down to the floor. Use your exhalation to soften any tightness. Release and let go. And then come all the way up. Come sit up onto your knees. Bring your knees together. Just release down onto your sitting bones. Have a breath there. Okay, so that you can see the, the screen, you can just stay there for a moment while I'll demonstrate what we've been working towards. And of course, remember the word ahimsa, non-violence. You listen to your body, see what's attainable for you. And again, throughout all the poses, there's certain parts that will be attainable for some. And not for others. So we will need a blanket folded like that. You can just watch for now. Some of you will need a blanket underneath your heels. So earlier when we were going from um, Utkatasan into Malasan, if you needed the support underneath your heels, then you'll take the support like that. Okay. And then a blanket or a bolster. This is important because when we go forward, we're not going to have hands. So if you do roll forward, you need something soft. We don't want you to squash your nose onto the floor or, or worse. <laughs> so, so I'll show you what we were doing earlier. We were getting the forearm to come out as low as we could onto the, the shin bones. So I'll show you from this side. 
feet are together if possible. And then from here, your knees open out to the sides. So if you want, you can even come sit into this position as I've shown you. So feet together, knees out to the sides. You can take your hands in front of you like that. So let your groin soften, let your buttocks descend. Let your chest lift. See, I'm cheating. I've actually come to the wall behind me. I didn't intend to. <laughs> a lot easier, but that is another way of doing it. So some of you are on the support like that, under your heels. But for everybody, knees apart, hands facing each other, chest lifted. Okay, so if you need to come out of that, just sit back as you were, and I'll show you what we're going to go into. I'm walking my forearms as far down as my, shin, my shins as I can, creating surface area in my hands, so spreading my fingers. And here's where there's a focus on direction. So like we did with the head, the handstand earlier, we need to shift the weight forward. So I'll just show you like this. Shift the weight forward to eventually get the lift. So we're not going to go up completely yet. So you can all do that. Now have the support in front of you. Take your forearms down your shins, as far down as you can. Spread your fingers, flatten your hands, feel your collarbones broadly moving away from each other. Press down onto the floor with your hands, and now just shift your weight forward. The direction is forward. Come up onto the balls of your feet, lift your heels, look forward, look forward. Come back, move back to your support or heels to the floor. And again, lift up onto the balls of your feet, lift your heels, look forward, look forward. And then come back down and rest. Just come sit onto your shins, point your toes back. If you've got that support there and you, that's underneath you, that's also fine. It's actually a lovely way to sit. And then just look here, I'll show you for the next day. So stay seated as you are. So again, you may have the support under the back of your heel, you may not. So here, you need to let the buttocks sink down. Let the knees separate. I'll show you from the front again, but I need you to see the direction again. So spread my fingers, lean forward, lift up. Get my, shin, my forearms even further down my shins. Lean, lean, lean. And then from here, moving your weight forward, Lifting your feet if you can. This is if it's attainable for you. And then coming back down. Okay, so I'll show you from the front. For those of you who are ready to go into it. And otherwise, you're just going to what was attainable for you. So you may just be doing the moving forward. Make sure your support is long enough that when you come all the way forward, if you were to roll forward, your face is going to land on something soft. So make it bigger if you want. Put two blankets, one in front of it. Not thinner, but as in a bigger surface area. Okay, so I'm walking my forearms down my shins. Fingers are spreading. Lean forward. As if your hands are like sticky frog hands, they can suck onto the floor. Lean forward, lean forward. Slowly lift my feet from the floor. Find the center of gravity and lift. So lift up away from the center of gravity. And that's where your balance is, in that center of your gravity. Not too far forward, um, Daisy, not too far forward. Lift your chest more. When you're going forward, look forward. Don't take your head down or you'll do a roly poly. So your forearms are pressing against your shin bones. You're still looking, looking down towards the front of your support. Keep your head up. So if you looked, if, yes, yes, very nice. Yes, lovely. Well done. So it's a good one just to play with. Nice. Nice, Louise. So just see, everybody will go to different places. As long as you've got that support in front of you. And if you had to roll forward, it's fine. You've got that support. And you can just turn your head and just relax if you do roll over. So, Corinne, as you go forward, let your butt come down more. So, everybody, the buttocks wants to go up. Let it come down as we did in 
Utkatas and Malasan. The buttocks must come down. Down, down, down. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you want to have a rest, just come rest in that Adamukha Virasana with your knees apart, your big toes pointing behind you, and your head down. Nice, Daisy. Okay, so that's a nice one for you guys to play with at home. And these, the asana that we have been doing are good preparations for this. Just have your head down and relax. Just rest down. And for those of you with children, it's a fun one to do with them. As long as um, there is that, that some sort of soft head support or face support in front. Just have your head down for a moment. Okay, slowly sit all the way up. If you have these yoga foams, that's great. Otherwise, take a few folded blankets or towels, whatever you've got that's quite dense, and make quite a um, stable support. You may have a very strong um, um, cushion or something from the, the lounge suite. And then we're going to sit onto the support. Take our hands back. I'll just demonstrate. I'll repeat this again. But for those of you already there in the position, you move your sacrum forward. Lie back. Keep your legs bent and be on the top of your shoulders, palms facing up. Some of you may just stay in this position. Some of you may extend your legs so that they're straight. Okay, so find whatever it is, the support that you're going to use. So if you have back, Problems don't take as much height. Just even take one or two folded blankets or foam. But make sure that when you come into the pose, you are sitting with your legs bent. Keep your legs bent when you lie back. So the direction here for when you're lying back, when you're moving back, is to lift your buttocks, move the sacrum towards your feet so that you end up with your sacrum on the support. Keep your legs bent until your shoulders and your head are on the floor. And then even there, pause, pause in that position. And then be on the top of your shoulders. Roll your shoulders back so that the top of your shoulders are resting on the floor. Turn your palms to face up towards the ceiling. And see, for some of you, this is the maximum. This is where you stay, especially if there are any back complaints or problems there. Just stay like this. Your knees are apart, your feet are flat on the floor. If it's attainable for you, you can move your feet a little bit away from you. You don't have to end up having them straight, but some of you may end up straightening them. If you do straighten them, pin your heels into the floor, point your toes up to the ceiling. So if you take your minds, out, your minds out, your legs, your kneecaps will be facing up to the ceiling. Your feet aren't rolling out to the sides. Let the back of your neck be long and soft. So your chin naturally moves towards your, your chest. Your pelvic girdle is supported. So there's no work to be done there. Just ensuring that your legs aren't rolling out to the sides and that the thoracic spine, so the upper part of your spine, is moving up into your chest, lifting up into your chest. Close your eyes. And just focus on your breath without controlling it. The soft, serene breath. This life force or prana. Just observe the natural course of it for now.
And if there, there is any tightness in your back or your hips, use your exhalation to soften, to release that. I'm just going to read to you one of the, the yamas. Um, the yamas in the yogic philosophy are it's self-restraint. So there's a, there's a few of them, but I'm going to start with what we've been talking about is non-violence. If you need to come out of this, just bend your knees, take the support out, lengthen the lower back towards the tailbone, and then just have your knees apart, let your knees touch towards each other and relax. So if you need to come out of it, otherwise just stay with your eyes closed. Nonviolence means not harming, injuring or hurting another creature and therefore means offering compassion and love both to ourselves and to others. The yogi knows that all creatures are his one self, that in his essence he is no different from others and so must treat them with exactly the same respect as he does himself. This is really just another instance of the golden rule. But when we act from the deluded ego-driven self, life is totally different. We normally live out of a negative cycle. From fear comes insecurity. From insecurity comes cravings or greed. From greed comes frustration. From frustration comes anger and from anger comes aggression and violence leading to separation and ugliness. The yogi, by freeing himself from fear and insecurity, has no need to attach himself to outside objects and does not go down this negative spiral, but creates a positive one leading to unity and beauty. By not acting in a negative, aggressive, violent way, he or she creates an atmosphere in which everyone she comes into contact with, feels this harmonious and peaceful atmosphere and responds positively to it. He creates around himself a state of peace and harmony in which he can respond freely and creatively in everything he does. So slowly come out of that by lifting your pelvis up high, pressing down into your feet and then taking your support out. As you come down, slowly lengthen the lumbar, the lower back and the tailbone towards your feet, almost curling your pubic bone up towards you. And just pause there for a moment. Bring your knees into your chest, hold at the top of your shins. So keep your shins held into the towards your chest and as you breathe in allow your knees to move away from you as you breathe out draw them in closer And then slowly roll over to your right to come up and we'll prepare for Shavasana. So I forgot to say that fun pose that we were doing just now is Bakasana, which is a, a crane or a crow. So we're going to do the relaxation now. Have something like a folded blanket or towel for underneath your head. Any back complaints or stiffness, take a chair so that you, you can rest your calves on the chair. For the rest of you, you can either slide a bolster or some foams or a blanket under the back of your legs. Some of you may want to lay completely flat, but please, for, for today, at least have something under your head. Check that when you lie down, there's a correct alignment, so you're not undoing all of this work that we've done. The head support comes underneath your head and touches the top of your shoulders. So it's not just under your head and then your neck is hanging, it's touching the top of your shoulders. You can let, even lift your head, take your hands to the back of your head, your skull, lengthen your back of your neck so your chin comes towards your chest and then slowly lower it down, keeping your chin towards your chest. If you have eye cover and you want to take it, you can put it over your eyes. 
Have a blanket if you're cold. Your palms face up. And once you've checked in that you are lying straight, which is making sure your shoulders are tucked under and we're moving down your back, your buttocks flesh moving down towards your feet side. Then completely relax, let go of this physical body. Let your eyes close and soften. As we, you can allow every part of the body to soften and release. So during the physical asana practice, there's a lot of pushing and pulling and balancing and using the muscles and the ligaments and the bones. But now allow your skin to become soft and sensitive, this biggest organ on the body. And we, are, we allow ourselves to now move inwards, away from the skin. This barrier between the physical, the, the inner and the outer wall, worlds. And we move inwards to our inner world. Let your eyes release away from your eyelids relaxing towards the back of your head and your tongue let it soften away from your front teeth let it be soft and relaxed broadening into the lower palate of the mouth and towards the back of the throat allowing the inner walls of the throat to become soft and broad. We draw our senses inward, so away from any external sounds that are present, allow the, the ear canals to soften and move from the outer ear area to the inner ear towards each other. And where all these senses meet and are drawn in towards the back of the head, allow them now to soften as if melting with the awareness, the consciousness, the brain down towards the chest. Becoming a, a pool in the heart center, the heart chakra. And if your mind wanders, bring it back to the space where your breath will gently guide you to. Allow yourself to let go of everything else and rest in this inner sanctuary.
bring your attention back to your heart center or heart chakra, also known as Anahata Chakra. And imagine this beautiful green orb of light as you allow your breath to lengthen. Allow this green orb of light to rise and expand, filling every space in your body. Let your thumb touch each fingertip gently. Feel that mind and body awareness. Bring your hands onto your abdomen. And now bend your knees. Bring your right arm up and overhead onto the floor behind you and roll to your right. So you rest your head onto your right arm and just stay in that fetal position. Let your eyes start to open slowly, focusing, looking down. And then use your left hand, press your left hand into the floor, come up slowly, bring your head up last and sit on something. You can just cross your legs, bring your hands together one more time in the prayer position, Namaskarasan. Lift your chest and then release your head down to your heart with your eyes closed. Have a moment to yourself. Allow the outer corners of your mouth to gently lift. And bring this inner smile down through your body, all the way down to the root chakra, right to the base of the spine. And up again. all the way to the top of your head. Namaste, thank you everybody. Keep the smile within us, the inward and the outward. Hope you all have a most wonderful day. Lots of love. Mm -hmm.